Okay, folks, let's get started. Hope everybody had a nice three-day break. Anybody not have a nice three-day break? That means everybody had a nice three-day break? Or there's people who don't want to tell us how bad their break was, which I can understand also. I had a nice three-day break. So we're now ready for the final home stretch. And that home stretch is going to come this week in terms of uh, finishing up photosynthesis today, starting nitrogen metabolism today and tomorrow, and dealing with signaling on Friday. So it's going to be a busy week. Your, 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 your smiles are all over your faces when I say that. It's just, you're very so happy to hear that. But then the end is near. The end is that we will have a final exam on Thursday of finals week at noon in this room. And um, then the end truly will be here. So um, that's the uh, plan. OK. Uh, for those of you who turned in regrades, I have not finished those. I will finish those tonight. Put them in the office tomorrow. You'll have the regrade. Uh, and you'll be set. So uh, hopefully everything is set with that. OK, well, last time I got just a very brief start into photosynthesis. And so today what I'm going to do is go through that in a little bit more detail. Uh, not a lot of detail, but a little bit more detail. And then we will uh, move our attention to nitrogen metabolism, which is a very important and interesting phenomenon that occurs in all living systems. So last time I told you, just in words, a little bit about uh, the different types of um, uh, photosynthesis, the different systems of photosynthesis. And now what I want to do is go into a bit of detail uh, about those systems. So photos photosynthesis, as I referred to last time, occurs in what we call a light cycle and a dark cycle. And the light cycle occurs in, the, uh, uh, in a process that obviously re requires light, as I mentioned. It's stimulated by photons, as I'll show you today. And it produces, as its end product, it produces oxygen, and it produces ATP, and it produces NADPH. That's the three products of the light cycle of photosynthesis. In the dark cycle of photosynthesis, which, as I said, does not require dark. It can occur in the light or the dark. In the dark cycle of photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is extracted from the atmosphere and incorporated into a sugar, as we shall see. Ultimately, you can make glucose in this way through a sort of a convoluted process. And I'll show you that as well. So that's what we have on tap for right now. Uh, the first thing I should talk about, I mentioned it briefly last time, is chlorophyll. Uh, chlorophyll is the light harvesting molecule that chloroplasts use. Okay? So in that thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast I talked about last time, we have uh, chlorophyll molecules. And those chlorophyll molecules, um, you've seen a structure like this before. That, that structure looks very much like the heme group of hemoglobin. And the primary difference between the heme group and hemoglobin and the chlorophyll structure is right there. Heme has an iron at that point. Chlorophyll has a magnesium at that point. Now, as that might suggest to you, the electronic properties of having a magnesium there instead of having an iron there might cause this to have some interesting um, ways of behaving. And in fact, it does. And it's because of that magnesium there that we actually see the, the uh, ability to excite electrons. And uh, we'll, we'll see that process in just a little bit. Now, you're not going to draw a structure, of course, or anything like that. But I think you should certainly know that chlorophyll looks an awful lot like heme. Okay. These are something that books get very excited about absorption spectra of all these. And for our purposes, I think it's really not necessary that we go through that. You like that? Now, the pathway that excitement of light uh, takes uh, through the chloroplast is interesting. Light, uh, pho photons of light impinge upon uh, light harvesting pigments. And the energy of those photons ultimately make their way to something called a reaction center. And this is a very active area of investigation, understanding what reaction centers are and how they function. Um, I only bring this up not to teach you anything about reaction centers, because to be honest with you, I don't know anything about reaction centers myself. But reaction centers are where the reactions that we'll be talking about are actually occurring. Now, when we look, and this is a terrible figure, when we look at what happens in photosynthesis, there are 
really two different photosystems that occur in plants that we have to, have to consider. So what I want to do is look at this in a simple fashion, starting with this membrane view, and then I'll flip back to that other one that I uh, tried to show you uh, earlier. Plants have within them, in their chloroplasts, two photosystems. They're called photosystem two and photosystem one. And the photosystem two is the place where the first reactions occur that are necessary for photosynthesis uh, to occur, the harvesting of the light energy. So what happens is um, we have the, uh, a photon of light coming from the sun, or whatever source of light that we happen to have, which interacts with first photosystem two. It's at photosystem two where uh, water is split into protons and oxygen molecules. It's in photosystem two where electrons are excited for the first time. And then, after those electrons have been excited, they're passed onto a molecule called plastoquinone, which I'll show you uh, the structure of in just a little bit. Plastoquinone, notice, has a Q in it, which is, it has a structure not unlike coenzyme Q, which you saw in the electron transport system. It's a small molecule, and it's capable of carrying electrons. So, plastoquinone shuttles back and forth between photosystem um, uh, two and this uh, ferrodoxin, this, this iron uh, sulfur containing system over here, which ultimately passes electrons off into photosystem one. All right, so it's a little bit more complicated than what we saw in electron transport. Yes, ma'am? Yeah, plastoquinone, P L A S T O Q U I N O N E. And if you want to abbreviate it PQ, you're, you're welcome to do so. Plastoquinone. Okay, well, the exact order in which all of these things are going through isn't important. You should certainly know that photosystem two is where the process starts. And you should know that plastoquinone plays a role in the movement of the electrons. You should also know that plastocyanin plays a role. It's called PC, and I'll spell that for you also. It's plasto, as before, P-L-A-S-T-O, C-Y-A-N-I-N. So plastocyanin is carrying those electrons ultimately to photosystem one. Now, I'm, I am, believe it or not, I am sparing you a lot of details because there's a lot of different proteins that gets passed from molecule to molecule to molecule that we're not talking about. And I like to keep it at a very general level in terms of photosystems two and one. This process is what's referred to as a Z scheme because you see it sort of coming down, up, down, up, like a, like a Z. Uh, and I'll, that'll be a little bit more apparent when I show you the other figure in a second. When the electrons arrive from, from plastocyanin, um, as you see here, they're deposited in photosystem one, and now a second photon of light comes and excites those same electrons to new heights. And it's that second excitement of electrons that ultimately passes those electrons to a protein called ferrodoxin. I, I started to call this ferrodoxin. It's not ferrodoxin. Ferrodoxin is over here. It's called FD on here. And ferrodoxin, if you want the spelling of that, is F-E-R-R-E-D-O-X-I-N. I'm sorry? It's a different wavelength from the first one. Different wavelength from the first one. Yep. So they have, they have their own optimal wavelengths of absorbing light. This guy passes electrons to ferrodoxin. The ferrodoxin goes to this complex over here, which donates electrons to NADP to make NADPH. Okay, so this, what I've just shown you, is the equivalent of the electron transport system. The electron transport system in um, our cells is taking electrons from NADH and passing them through a series of complexes, ultimately donating those to oxygen to make water. This guy's kind of doing the reverse. It's taking electrons from water, it's passing them through a series of complexes, and ultimately donating them to NADP to make NADPH. Now, it might seem like we're trying to make everything run downhill, right? We have to go downhill at some point in order for these electrons to move one direction or the other. We can't go home and come back and go downhill the entire time. We have to go uphill at some point. The uphill is in photosynthesis, and the uphill is occurring with these absorption of these photons. The photons are lifting those electrons to those heights that they need to go to so they can ultimately be donated to NADP. 
So we're literally pushing those electrons up the hill with photons of light. That's where the energy comes from going up the, for going up that hill. OK. Well, that's the movement of the electrons. What about the protons? All right. Protons are pumped as a result of moving through this complex right here. And the pumping of the protons is moving those protons into the um, lumen of the thylo thylakoid uh, complex. So we're moving it in. That means we have a higher concentration of protons inside of the thylakoid than outside. So those protons want out. And those protons come out in a process very much like what we saw in uh, oxidative phosphorylation. They pass through this ATP synthase, which looks very much like the one we have in our mitochondria. It comes out, and in the process, makes ATP. So now, in a schematic figure, you see what I told you the other day in words. That is, that we have excitement of electrons, we have pumping of protons, we have transfer to NADP, and we have synthesis of ATP. At this point, we have finished the photophosphorylation, the light cycle of photosynthesis. I'm sorry? The photoelectric effect? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I guess it could be. Because certainly that's what's happening is pho photons are exciting the movement of electrons, and that's causing an electrical current as, as such to, to pass. So yes, I would, I would agree with that. Well, uh, there's actually two places, though, where light is affecting those electrons. So they're affected here and here. Um, I don't use that term photoelectric effect, so I, I don't know where people would draw the line for that, to be honest with you. Yes? Yep. FD is fine. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, in fact, you can use any of the abbreviations that, that they use up here as well. I will. I will have both. And if I don't, you can raise your hand and ask me, and I'll be happy to tell you. How's that? Okay. So we're cooking. Now, let's just take a brief look and see why this is called the Z scheme. Okay. So here is another way of looking at the same thing. We see. Photosystem 2, we see photosystem 1, we see electrons coming in, they're excited, they fall down, they're excited again, and they fall down. That's basically what's happening if we plot this as a function of energy. And so it looks like a Z uh, as it comes through and does that. This down here is the same basic thing you saw in the last figure I just showed you. Okay. Now, one of the things that's, that's sometimes confusing to students is, well, how does this process get started? The process gets started by virtue of the fact that it's the photon that starts everything. The photon grabs an electron from this complex. It grabs an electron. It excites that electron. That electron is no longer there, and that electron is no longer available. That leaves behind, literally, a hole for electrons. And that hole for electrons is communicated through a manganese complex, which donates an electron to replace it. But then the manganese complex is itself deficient in electrons. The deficiency in electrons causes the manganese complex to take electrons away from water. And that's how this overall process goes. So it doesn't start with the splitting of water. It starts with the excitement of that first electron. That's where the overall process begins. The, the pulling of the electrons from water is a function of the deficiency of the electrons in that manganese complex. So much for that. Let's talk about, let's just show you some of the molecules. Here's plastoquinone. Coenzyme Q looks an awful lot like that. It has a long hydrophobic tail that sticks it in the membrane. Has ability to carry, carry electrons up in this ring, just like uh, coenzyme Q does. So that's very similar. Ubiquinone, very similar sorts of structures there. Ubiquinone is also an electron carrier uh, in this overall process. And now, uh, we've just talked about photosynthesis.